Hello, so um, this is Oliver um, for this evening's session for um, people to be able to ask questions about health. So it usually takes a few minutes for people to start joining. I thought, um, so I thought what I might start talking about to start off with is understanding more about the lungs and the health of the lungs because this is obviously um, of a lot of importance um, at the current times um, because it's our, our lungs which are protecting us from um, uh, picking up infections, bacterial, viral, uh, fungal infections. Um, interesting news item uh, this evening um, that some new research being done um, into why some people without any underlying health problems um, de develop serious symptoms with coronavirus, whereas other people don't. So it's well known that people with um, um, existing lung circulatory problems, di uh, type 2 diabetes, etc., are more susceptible because of a reduced Im uh, immunity. Um, but there's a kind of mystery in, in, from a Western medical point of view as to why some people that aren't showing any symptoms at all um, um, may get, uh, uh, don't have any underlying health problems, get um, uh, a serious infection. And really this is exactly the same question with colds and flu and other health problems as well. Why do some people um, not get flu? Why do some people get flu? Why do some people get flu very seriously? Um, this really depends on the strength uh, and the health of our lungs. Um, Oriental medicine and some other kind of natural medicines are somewhat different to Western medicine in that they have studied more um, the body in health. And so in Oriental medicine, we, uh, we can see even though, even though a number of people don't have any noticeable lung problems, they don't have any asthma or hay fever, um, or bronchitis um, or other kind of underlying uh, lung problems, uh, there may still be a big weakness uh, in the lungs. Uh, in oriental medicine, um, the lungs are especially um, protecting the body from these external viruses uh, and bacteria, and uh, especially the mucous membrane, which is a very thin membrane lining our nose and sinuses and throat and lungs, um, is um, often just one or a few layers of cells which have to make a very strong barrier and stop things getting through and if it becomes a little bit porous then um, 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 microorganisms may get in um, and also things like uh, pollen and other airborne um, uh, substances may get in and then set up an allergic reaction um, so having allergies to pollen or other airborne substances already that that is you know one indication that there's some weakness in the lung energy so um so they want to do some research their main research is going to be into genetics to look for genetic differences as to why people some people get uh, coronavirus and other infections seriously and others not um i really strongly suspect that it's you know that there may be some genetic influence but primarily it's going to be people's uh, diet and lifestyle and the health of their whole body and especially their lungs um, that determines whether they get serious infection or not so we've had the example for example of uh, Prince Charles um, um, uh, catching the coronavirus and uh, he's 71 having quite mild symptoms and then uh, Boris Johnson, who's uh, quite a bit younger, having pretty serious symptoms. Um, so, you know, so why is this? Um, uh, really, it's a lot of it is about the strength of the lungs. Um, so, there's various ways we can understand the strength of our own lungs um, using different methods of oriental diagnosis. So this is not this is not like a really hard and fast way. It's it's a little subjective, um, but when you add up a number of different um, methods of diagnosis, um, then one can become more accurate. 
So I'm going to quickly run through uh, uh, a number of different methods of diagnosis. Some may kind of make sense to you, some may, may not so much. So the first thing in oriental medicine that we'd look at uh, to understand um, someone's lungs is their facial color. Obviously, we all have different facial colors depending on uh, our heritage. Um, uh, pale, a bit darker, yellower, browner, uh, very dark. Um, also, our skin color varies according to our health. So, for example, if the kidney function is poor, we may develop some darkness through the skin or a kind of dirtiness in the skin. If the liver is not functioning well, we may develop more of an olive yellow color. Whatever our normal color is, that we can develop that um, um, kind of tinge uh, afterwards. Um, so um, I'm just going to take a break and say thank you, Penny and Annie and Pema and uh, Jan and everyone who's joined and Haida. You said I've fallen victim to COVID-19 and I'm recording now at home. So um, maybe if you've got some questions about how to help some of your symptoms, then we could we could talk about that as well. It could be a very useful thing to talk about. But at the moment, what I'm talking about is how to diagnose uh, the uh, condition of our lungs, the health of our lungs. So skin color with lungs, if if the lungs are not functioning well, the skin can go a paler color, more of a whitish color. So these are subtle but definite differences, and one needs to one needs to kind of you know study in a class and you know learn to compare a lot of different people, and then these these changes in color become uh, uh, pretty clear. So that's number one, skin color. Uh, number two, we can use um, facial area diagnosis. So in oriental diagnosis, different regions of the face relate to different uh, organs in the body. And the, the, two, the area which relates to the lungs are the cheeks. Um, and in oriental medicine, the um, organs are paired um, um, uh, according to having similar functions. And the lung is paired with a large intestine, uh, which shows up in the lower lip. So these are the two places that we want to look at to see the strength of someone's lungs and therefore the strength of their immunity. So in facial area diagnosis, um, it's, um, if, if we're in good health, then our whole face tends to have more or less the same color. Um, when we get a change in color, um, just in one region of the face, it might be around the eyes, it might be the forehead, it might be between the eyes, it might be the cheeks, it might be around the mouth, then that's indicating that there's an imbalance in the corresponding organ. So. Um, so with the lungs, we're looking at the cheeks and to some extent the nostrils as well, uh, the beginning of the lungs. Um, if, if this area becomes uh, more red than the rest of the face, there's like a permanent redness. That indicates that there's some weakness in the lungs. Um, this, is quite, this is common with people with hay fever. People with hay fever often have some redness in the cheeks and sometimes up here as well. Um, um, so if there's some strong redness in the cheeks, that's indicating that there's some weakness in the lungs. Um, also, this may seem like a strange one. Uh, I look up a lot of people's noses because I give shiatsu treatments. Um, so I get the chance to look up people's noses. Um, when people eat a lot of yin foods, which are the foods which particularly weaken the lungs and therefore uh, the, the, our immune system, uh, like uh, sugar, a lot of tropical fruits, fruit juices, um, um, spices, alcohol, um, uh, etc. The the nostrils can become swollen, and then and then the, the nostril um, becomes uh, the hole becomes smaller. So um, sometimes you can see that the no this this part of the nostril, this part of the nose, uh, becomes swollen. So that's again a sign of weakness in the lungs. Because if it's swollen here, then the lining of the, the mucous membrane of the lungs uh, is, is also swollen. And as I was talking about, the mucous membrane needs to create a very strong, tight barrier to stop things getting through. And if it becomes swollen, then, then um, the, uh, the, you know, there's, there's more space, uh, more gaps for uh, viruses, etc. to get in. 
Um, then we can also look at the, the lower lip, which is reflecting the condition of the large intestine. So again, um, um, according to our racial type, we all have different size lips. Uh, so we're not talking about that, but whatever size of lips we were born with, they, they can change through our lifetime depending on our health. Um, and so one thing, uh, if people are eating more yang foods, which create more tightness and strength in the lungs, then the lips may get smaller, like that. Or if people are eating a lot of yin foods, a lot of sugary foods, a lot of processed foods lacking fiber, uh, a lot of fruit, soft drinks, etc., then the lower lip can get larger. And that is showing that the, um, that the large intestine has become weak and expanded and, and also the mucous membranes in the intestine. So our immunity in the intestine to bugs that which we may pick up in food um, is also weaker. Um, so that's so we can use facial diagnosis to understand the lungs. Then uh, another way is that um, the, the lung, we can look at the lung meridian, the uh, meridians which are used in acupuncture and acupressure and uh, shiatsu. And the, uh, so the, these meridians are carrying energy to and from the internal organs. So they're very useful to, to know and to work on uh, because uh, they help us diagnose our internal organs and also uh, help uh, our, our internal organs. And the lung meridian starts inside the shoulder. If you go, if you find your collarbone um, and come along underneath your collarbone until you hit the shoulder and you can't, you hit the bone there and you can't go any further, that is the second point on the lung meridian. And then if you drop down um, about one inch or two and a half centimeters, uh, you're on lung one. Um, so good. To give them, why don't we, why don't we, why don't you all give this a press? Um, this is a good way of uh, stimulating the lungs, getting more energy in the lungs. So in Oriental medicine, our lungs not only function physically, um, they're also functioning uh, energetically. Uh, chi, ki, prana, is flo life energy is flowing through the body and helping everything work. Um, so if we have more chi in our lungs, then that is going to help the lungs to defend the body. So one way, one way of uh, helping our lungs is to press in on lung one quite deeply for half a minute or a minute or two, give it some massage. And you may feel, you may feel you can take some deeper breaths when you do that, which is a good sign. And the lung meridian then comes down the arm and which way do I move? Uh, comes down the arm and ends up on the inside of the thumb and at the base of the thumbnail. So any if, if one suffers a weakness or arthritis or problems in the thumb, that's very often because of a weakness in the lung meridian, another kind of diagnostic sign. Another diagnostic sign, uh, when we have a good amount of energy in our lung meridians, then our chests tend to, feel, tend to be quite full of qi, and uh, uh, the muscles look stronger. If our lung qi becomes weak, then our shoulders tend to come forwards, and our posture tends to be more like this. Um, shoulders coming forwards, head coming forwards. Um, it's more difficult to breathe deeply when our posture is like this. Um, um, so that's another sign that the lungs aren't functioning so well. So if you or your family or anybody you know has a posture like that, very good to look up um, where the lung meridian runs and you can stimulate across the chest and then into these points, lung one, lung two, and work down the lung meridian. And this is going to help strengthen the lung key, um, which um, is going to help strengthen your immune system. Not miraculously, not 100%, but it's going to help a bit. Um, um, so these are some of the ways that we see we can diagnose the lungs. Um, so you probably noticed from, from what I said, the things which are, um, are most, most weakening for the lungs are what in macrobiotics we would call the strong yin foods, foods which, which expand and loosen the body. Number one, refined sugar. As I've said, in lower down in other 
um, Facebook lives. If you want to, if you want to strengthen your immune system, one of the best things you can do is to give up eating refined sugar. We do need some sweetness. Go onto the website, go go to the information, and you can download a nice document that that gives you some help with giving up sugar and what you can eat instead in the way of making desserts and making yourself sweet foods uh, to replace that. Um, also, a lot of tea, a lot of tea and coffee, uh, alcohol, um, a lot of uh, uh, refined foods lacking fiber, um, um, a lot of tropical fruits, you know, oranges, pineapples, mangoes, etc. Um, better to eat temperate climate fruits, apples, pears, uh, berries, etc. And uh, fruit juice also um, uh, weakens the lungs. So people think. Well, people have changed their mind about fruit juice, but really fruit juice is not so great. Things which are good, strengthening for the lungs. You could say, in general, whole foods, uh, whole plant foods. So whole grains, uh, millet, brown rice, uh, quinoa, etc. And out of all the grains in Oriental medicine, they say that short grain brown rice is the grain that most, most strength strengthens uh, the lungs. So you may not have cooked short grain brown rice before. Maybe you've used long grain or basmati. So short grain, you need to cook it 50 to 60 minutes. Sounds like a long time, um, but the grains are tighter and you need to cook them a long time to, so that they start splitting open and really become digestible and, and uh, strengthening for the lungs. So whole grains, whole vegetables, especially two kinds of vegetables, root vegetables, uh, like carrots, parsnips, um, swedes, and also uh, dark green leafy greens, things like kale and green cabbages, um, uh, to some extent broccoli, sprouting broccoli, all those kind of things. Um, uh, a lot of, have a lot of fiber, um, which um, strengthens the large intestine and the lungs. Whole beans, um, uh, kidney beans, aduki beans, chickpeas, you know, uh, brown, green lentils, whatever. Sea vegetables, seeds, um, um, sea vegetables, if you get into eating sea vegetables. So all of these whole foods um, strengthen the lungs. Um, um, so um, the other thing which is very helpful for the lungs is, is um, uh, breathing deeply, whether that's through doing aerobic exercise, going for a brisk walk or, or a trot, or doing your housework energetically. Uh, vacuuming the whole house it can be, uh, I've discovered, is, uh, is pretty energetic. Gardening, etc. Um, or if one's not able to take that kind of vigorous exercise for some reason, then uh, learning abdominal breathing and, um, and deep breathing techniques uh, where, where you're breathing not only with your chest but also with your abdomen, uh, which means that the lungs are expanding and uh, the air is going much more deeply into the lungs. So these are all things which um, I, uh, we teach on various courses. So. Uh, so that's a bit about the lungs. Um, so um, I'm actually going to, um, last night I started um, my first uh, a new online course, which is how to, how to get healthy during the COVID-19 uh, epidemic, pandemic, uh, and had a sudden rush. We had over 20, got over 20 people on that course. So we may run that one again. Next week, if you're interested in learning more deeply about health, I'm starting a course uh, strength, uh, st on specifically on strengthening the immune system. Um, series of four classes, so we're going to have an hour all about the lungs, uh, an hour about the intestines, an hour about the lymphatic system, and an hour about our cellular immunity, um, looking at it from a Western point of view, and especially using a lot of oriental medicine. Uh, so Haida, you're recovering. Um, yeah, no need to apologise. So that's good to hear you're recovering. Um, um, if uh, uh, okay, Leslie, nice to have you here again. And Stavros, uh, I've been thinking about you ever since I met you in um, 
was it was it Spain or Portugal some years ago? It'd be great to see you again sometime. And Kim, Kim, good to see you too. Um, so hi there. You're you're asking about ginger and lemon. Uh, you often tell your patients to use these as a drink for a cough. Uh, yeah, I think that can be useful for a cough. Um, what you could also put in it is a little bit of something sweet which is kind of loosening, particularly if there's tightness um, or there's, there's st uh, stuck mucus. Um, you could say we have two kinds of coughs. We have a wet cough or a productive cough where we're bringing up mucus. So that's great because the lungs are getting cleaned. And then, um, and then we have a dry cough, which, which is often because the mucus is getting stuck more deep in the lungs. Uh, with coronavirus, there's much more of this deep dry cough, um, um, partly because the virus is attacking the, the actual cells which have these little little hairs on, which, which move the mucus from the lungs up to the back of the throat, and it's then swallowed uh, and down to the stomach. So to that ginger and lemon, you could add something a little bit sweet. Sometimes people add a little bit of honey. The only thing is a shot of glucose isn't great for the immune system. Um, so a little bit of rice syrup would be a bit better. Um, or even a little bit of concentrated apple juice. Um, that, that can be more loosening. Uh, and to really have it hot, because um, um, that, that heat can also help loosen up the mucus. Something else that can be very good for stuck mucus in the lungs is a good old traditional steam bath um, where you get a big bowl, fill it up with uh, near boiling water, uh, you put a few drops of something like eucalyptus oil in it, uh, something which really helps to cut through mucus, and then you put a towel over your head and you breathe in that steam, be careful, you can burn yourself, just be, you know, be careful. But over 10, 15 minutes, you breathe in that steam, and you'll probably find that a lot of mucus starts coming out. So have some ha handkerchief or tissues or something handy, loo roll, handy to um, you know to, to help that mucus come out. And you can repeat that steam bath, you know, three, four, five times a day if there's really a lot of stuck mucus in uh, um, uh, in the lungs. It can really feel very good to have a good uh, clear out. Um, Irene, great. Hi, great to hear from you again. I, I, um, uh, I see things from you uh, sometimes. Uh, you're up to great things in, uh, in, in Belgium, which is really great to see. Um, Ingrid, saw hey, nice to see you. And Christine Howarth, good to see you again too. Um, um, now, something strange has happened to my screen where the comments have become very large and I've lost myself so um, I can't quite see how to what to do if anybody has any comments about how I can reduce the size of the uh, script then uh, please send it in otherwise I'm just going to continue but I can't see myself so so there we go um, Christine what do I think about a nebulizer treatment such as with iodine? Can you give a little bit more detail as to what you mean by uh, nebulizer? What, what kind of nebulizer um, uh, are you talking about, Christine? Hi, Rita. Nice to have you here again. Um, missing seeing you. I uh, hope to see you again sometime. Um, so, Christine, what particular kind of nebulizer were you thinking of? Um be great to, to hear from you. Um, or does anybody else have any questions about treating the symptoms of, of a cough or, or getting a virus? Uh, I don't know if anyone has had symptoms. Hader, I don't know what kind of symptoms you had. And uh, if... Uh, uh, it would be helpful to uh, talk about what, to, how, what could help you with those symptoms. Um, with hot steam, um, okay, yes, I think hot steam is um, you know, d definitely good uh, for um, um, getting the mucus out. Hader, interesting, you're saying nebulizers carry a high risk of spreading the virus particles to others. So, um, 
I'm not completely sure what you mean by a nebulizer as opposed to breathing in the steam from a, from a, from a bowl. Um, but um, if one is clearing out mucus in any way, then it would be good to be doing it in a room on your own. Um, because if you're coughing and sneezing and things, then you could be uh, cre you know, um, uh, creating a lot of droplets uh, with uh, viruses in. Um, hi Jean, uh, good to have you here. Um, so, um, some other things which can help the lungs um, um, uh, and the sinuses. Um, if you feel that you have some uh, blockage or irritation uh, in your nose, then you can get a, a cup of uh, warm uh, kind of body temperature water and dissolve a teaspoonful of salt in it. And then, um, and then you can breathe it in your nose. And there's two different ways of doing this. Uh, one way is to uh, put it in a neti bottle, um, an Indian little bottle, and you can pour it in. Personally, what I do is I just cut my hand and uh, have it in my hand and then close one nostril and then suck it up with your other nostril. And then you can, afterwards, you can do your other nostril. It can sting a little bit, um, but you'll find that if you repeat that, then it's very good for clearing mucus out of your nose. Um, also, if the mucous membrane has become um, rather swollen, the salt will help it to contract. Um, so this is something where you could do to keep cl clearing your nose and um, uh, and uh, helping uh, the, the strength of the mucous membrane in your nose. If you feel that something's happening uh, more in your throat, uh, the back of, in the back of your mouth, the back of your throat. Then you could do a salt water gargle. Again, um, a cup or a mug of um, body temperature water, or slightly hotter. Dissolve a teaspoonful of salt in it, um, and then uh, and then gargle with it. Um, because there's quite a lot of salt, make sure you don't swallow it. Uh, uh, you want to spit it out. Um, so again, you can repeat that a number of times. Uh, it can be good when there's swelling or discomfort at the back of the throat. Um, um, so, Haida, you said you had night sweats, um, a lack of energy, body aches and a dry cough, all, all gone now, apart from the dry cough and energy is up and down, so, yeah, so, you know, our, our energy does go down when our body's really fighting a virus, so great, you, great that you're getting so if you cough, if you wanted to, you could try the two remedies that we that we talked about: the hot lemon and ginger with a little bit of rice syrup or something sweet in there um, uh, to, as, as a drink, and also the steam bath uh, to get uh, you know, get any mucus out of there, and uh, that should ease your cough and you know, help your lungs to to cleanse. Um, um, uh, so, hi Suzanne, and it's nice to hear, um, Haida, that um, you know someone who's uh, got through the infection. Um, um, understandably, um, a lot of uh, a lot of fear around uh, of uh, catching the coronavirus, um, particularly for people who are older um, or. Um, who have underlying health conditions so really this is a good time whatever one's age or whatever one whatever our health to really take the steps i've been describing to really improve uh, our uh, uh, strength in our immune system it's interesting there's been some stories in the press of some uh, people in their 90s and even that there was i think a 102 year old man um, who had coronavirus and he and he uh, he was hospitalized but he got through it and uh, came out so it's not inevitable that you know because one's old that one's going to get the coronavirus um or or to get to get serious symptoms um there could be two reasons why old people are 
more susceptible to getting serious symptoms with coronavirus. One is one is age, and unfortunately, as we get towards the end of our life, uh, lots of things don't work so well, um, including our immune system. Um, but the other reason could be is um, that as most people get older, um, our health declines, and we pick up um, a variety of different health problems. So, for example, they've uh, found that people with high blood pressure are likely to have more serious symptoms from the uh, coronavirus. So, high blood pressure, very common. I think it's like a third of the people in the United States um, have high blood pressure. I'm not sure what the figure is for Europe, but it's probably it's probably pretty similar. So, bringing blood pressure down to normal, um, for example, um, would be a really, really useful thing to do. So, people are often on medications um, uh, in order to do that, but one can also do it through a healthier diet and lifestyle um, uh, as well. So, that is going to strengthen the health and help lessen the severity of um, um, any kind of virus that one gets. So, hi Jennifer, nice to have you here again. Uh, so, you're asking, hey, to how, how, um, how she got tested. Um, so, Neil, you're asking about eating dead animals and animal products. So, in in one sense, they were the they were the uh, the uh, probably the cause of coronavirus. Uh, it seems like. Um, the, there, there are different strains of coronavirus which cause you know, flus and colds and um, this coronavirus and uh, the, the particular kind of strain which coronavirus comes from also lives um, in pigs and in chickens so often outbreaks of uh, different kinds of outbreaks of coronavirus comes um, from um, pigs and chickens um, and sometimes other mammals as well. So some time ago we had swine flu and then we also had bird flu. So certainly coming into contact, you know, breeding animals and coming into contact with animals and also animal, different species of animals coming into contact with each other is almost certainly one, you know, one of the ca causes for these new strains to, to, to break out. So I can't quite remember what they said about coronavirus. Possibly came from a bat, or possibly came from a bat, and then through a snake, um, or another animal, uh, and then into humans. So in that sense, um, there's the question. Or really, since this pandemic has affected people around the world, uh, maybe there should be um, some stricter health. Um, health laws about um, about uh, mixing different animal species in markets and abattoirs and so on and of course um, you know, if one, you know, the more one eats a plant-based diet the less that's going to happen anyway um, so then I think that's a bit different to eating dead animals and animal products we're not going to get the virus directly from those animals of course that may not be good for the health if we overeat um, uh, animals and, that, and animal products for sure uh, but we're not actually going to get the coronavirus directly from um, those animals but if we're eating you know, mammals and birds then possibly you could say we're contributing to the whole uh, system which um, mixes animal species and um, makes it more likely that these different new varieties of coronavirus um, uh, crop up um, so, Haida, uh, also blood pressure medication, some classes affect the kidneys. Yes, so there's some un kind of uncertainty in medical circles as to why people with high blood pressure um, um, often get coronavirus more, more seriously. Um, it, uh, there's evidence, some evidence that it's the high blood pressure, and then there's also evidence that it's actually some of the medications uh, which are taken for high blood pressure um, which makes people um, have more severe uh, symptoms so hey high blood pressure you know in most cases really is a diet and lifestyle cause illness um, and 
uh, really why not address it on that level and um, and then either avoid medic going on to medications or if one's on medications then quite possibly reduce or uh, come off medications I've seen quite a number of people do that um, um, interesting it's you know for, for, for 40, 40 years I've been looking at the the difference between the approach to health in the East and the West and they both got big pros um, um, big things going for them um, and also big differences um, one and one of the differences is a very different attitude to, to, to illness so in the West generally if there's an illness or symptoms the objective is to get rid of the illness or to get rid of the symptoms from a macrobiotic and oriental point of view if we become ill let's say we get a cold or a headache or a stomach pain um, obviously we want to get rid of it but um, what that is showing us is that somehow our diet our lifestyle our emotions uh, stress levels you know, uh, overwork or whatever it is something is creating those symptoms and if we're getting regular headaches then okay then we need to figure out instead of just taking painkillers we need to figure out well what's causing that headache um, is it stress is it because we're eating you know eating um, um, a poor diet um, if we can figure it out and um, and uh, make changes to our lifestyle our way of eating our thinking maybe emotionally and we can get rid of the headaches then our whole body has become weller and less likely to, to develop other illnesses so in this sense developing health problems um, is is a gift because it's showing us that in some somewhere in some way we we've, we've got out of balance um, so anytime we get a minor symptom rather than thinking okay well let's what can i do to get rid of it um, think okay well what what can i do, you know, uh, try and understand what has caused it and oriental medicine is very very good at understanding the, the dietary lifestyle emotional mental um, uh, social causes of different health problems and then change the causes and then we become more well than we were before we were ill and then that helps protect us from future illness so a very different approach to to uh, sickness and health if we're using the western approach of we just want to get rid of the symptoms or, or you know, the unpleasant symptoms or illness then our health may stay the same or our health may get worse so for example in this in this case of taking medications all medications have side effects um, for some people very mild, other people much more serious, but all medications have negative effects on the body. Um, so um, um, high blood pressure, taking medication, that's actually that's going to diminish our overall health. Um, in terms of lack of symptoms, it may seem that we're healthier, but actually because we haven't addressed the underlying um, imbalances and problems in the body, and we're taking medication actually our health is going to be going down which means that we're more susceptible to developing future illness now, if we developed high blood pressure and we sat down and thought well i'm working too hard i'm under too much pressure there's too much stress i'm eating too much meat and salt and um, um in what in macrobiotics we call yang foods meat salt eggs cheese which cause a lot of tension and all contribute to high blood pressure uh, as well as salt, um, yeah, uh, really reduce those foods, eating much more plant-based, more vegetables, etc. Uh, and then the health gets better, then, hey, then uh, we're less likely to get coronary heart disease, strokes, and you know a whole host of other problems. So very different attitude to, to, you know, to, uh, to sickness. Um, um, I so so I so wish the Western world could really embrace um, this kind of different attitude to sickness. Um, you know, that it's 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 there. Um, there's always a learning when we become sick. 
So I hope that's kind of meaningful uh, for you. Um, so um, um, okay, thanks, Haida, for sharing how you uh, got to test it. Um, uh, Angela, Francis, hi, Francis. Nice to see you. Great to see you in person sometime. Ingrid, you're saying, I, I think that when there is too much acid in the blood, who gives infections, which gives diseases and less immunity, older people have more issues. Most people I see in TV have increased body weight. Yes, so I think a lot of people are, a lot of people's health uh, is poor, even if they don't have named illnesses, and this could make them susceptible to the coronavirus and other infections, as I was saying at the beginning. Um, acid in the blood, there's um, um, so there's been a lot of talk about acid forming foods and alkaline forming foods actually the these, you know, I think this can definitely have effects but not so much in the blood because the body controls um, the pH, uh, the acidity of the blood very quickly uh, first of all, the kidneys, um, if the blood's becoming more acid, the kidneys produce, I think it's bicarbonate, uh, which brings it down. Also, we're, we're stimulated to breathe more deeply, which gets rid of car carbon dioxide and carbonic acid in the blood. So actually, the blood itself doesn't become more acid, unless one really has a very serious um, health condition. Um, um, but... It's, it's likely that some of the, the, the fluid around the cells, um, that the tissue fluid and possibly in the lymph can become more acid. Um, and certainly, you know, that may, you know, and that I think can lead to a, a, a number of problems and quite possibly to uh, a, a reduced um, 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 uh, Irene, advice on how to lower high blood pressure. So I was, um, I was, uh, I talked a bit about, um, um, there's um, some different, different causes, that's 95% 90, of high blood pressure, is there's too much internal pressure in the body. And people with high blood pressure often feel a lot of internal tension. And I know, you know, with your shiatsu, probably what you're going to find is, um, a lot of tension in the upper abdomen and a lot of tension um, very full liver liver gallbladder energy so when when the when the liver and liver and gallbladder are very full holding a lot of tension uh, this really affects the heart a lot and um, because the liver is here and then we have a thin diaphragm and then the heart sitting on top so the heart is uh, probably within, within a centimeter of the liver so whatever's, if we're holding a lot of tension, and we talk about being liverish and um, 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 meaning kind of angry or heated, uh, having hot blood, um, that's going to affect the heart and, uh, and then have a knock-on effect on our blood pressure. Um, so, so for 95% of cases, it's how to relax that tension. So dietary-wise, really reducing... Um, 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 or eliminating some of uh, salt, and if one's going to use salt, use sea salt rather than refined salt. Um, red meats, chicken, eggs, cheese. Substitute those with more vegetarian protein: um, beans, lentils, tofu, tempeh. Um, out of the animal foods, uh, fish is the fish is the kind of lightest, uh, particularly white fish. Um, eating a lot of vegetables, especially green vegetables maybe salads, um, uh, press salads, um, things which release, ten release tension from the body, fruits, cooked fruits, etc. Um, sour tasting foods uh, helps relieve pressure from, from the liver. Um, maybe one needs to look at lifestyle. Uh, is one push, you know, are people pushing themselves too hard under too much stress? Can they lighten their load? Are people hanging on to a lot of emotion? Because if we're bottling down our emotion, um, then that increases the pressure uh, in the in the uh, liver and the heart. So maybe people need to 
get in touch more with their emotions, expressing their emotions, especially frustrations um, uh, need to come out. Um, so people need to decompress is a word people use now, which I think is, which is which is a pretty good word. It's like decompressing. Uh, so that could take a bit of time. Um, a small number of people with high blood pressure have um, high blood pressure for a different reason. Um, uh, I remember a friend of mine years ago developed high blood pressure, and she was she was very chilled out. She wasn't that kind of that more kind of tense type with a, with a very um, stiff upper abdomen. Um, 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 she was actually had a very kind of light feeling to her. So, um, and she, and her high blood pressure in macrobiotic terms, we say a more yin high blood pressure is because too much energy was rising in the body, um, largely because her kidney energy was low. And in Oriental medicine, as you know, when the kidney energy is low, then our energy drifts up, and we may easily become overexcited or hysterical and um, have overactive minds, have difficulty getting to sleep, etc. Um, so in that case, things which bring the energy down are slightly more yang da, lots of whole foods, whole, whole grains, whole beans, soups, maybe some, you know, maybe some fish uh, um, to bring the energy down. Not socializing, not partying. I always remember she, her saying that, um, my friend saying that she went uh, on a, on a um, meditation retreat for a weekend and her blood pressure came right down to normal just from being very quiet and uh, l l letting her energy um, uh, go in more, being more internal. And she didn't socialize for a long period of time while she was strengthening herself and getting over that problem. Um, it can take some, some months to really start you know, changing um, the blood pressure, but um, you know, definitely you know, one can have a good effect on, on blood pressure. Um, um, so let's see what else you say. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Dr. Vogel um, said eating brown rice to lower bl to, to lower blood pressure and eating too much animal protein can cause high blood pressure. Yes, so I was saying, which is why we have so much high blood pressure in Western society. Um, you know, what is it? A third of people, you know, or something like that, have high blood pressure. It's we're really in the mood for that. Francis, and of course shiatsu, I, why didn't I say that, Francis, uh, is a wonderful preventive form of therapy to balance the body. And also, you know, I've found can be really useful for people with high blood pressure. Um, you have to be careful. You maybe don't want them lying on their front, um, which can create pressure on their chest. And you have to be careful. Often the heart protector meridian is very full. You have to be careful not to <laughs> increase that. You want to bring the energy down and really relax them and bring the energy down the body. And um, I think really helpful for people with high blood pressure as well as, of course, um, being preventative. Um, I generally have a shiatsu or sometimes a massage once, um, which uh, keeps me sane. Uh, yes, sadly, we don't focus on prevention in Western medicine. We could do much more from lifestyle and diet, absolutely. You know, and this is what oriental medicine and some traditional medicines are very good at. Um, we are beginning to get there in the West. I think the whole rapid increase in diabetes um, has really scared politicians and the medical establishment because um, at the moment in this country, in the UK, we're spending about 18 billion pounds a year treating diabetes and and the um, the side effects of diabetes, such as uh, such as uh, blindness and um, poor, poor circulation, gangrene, ulcers, leg amputations, kidney problems, etc. And so, you know, we're well on the way to the number of people with type two diabetes doubling, um, and that means we've got to find another 18 billion pounds just to spend on this one illness. So much more emphasis coming from the National Health Service now on um, reducing weight and eating a healthy diet and exercising. So it's beginning to go in the right direction. Um, personally, I've just, I've 
you know, when I started studying Oriental medicine 40 years ago, I just fell in love with it because it just has such a detailed, <laughs> comprehensive understanding of health and, um, and how we can keep ourselves well and how we can heal a lot of health problems in a very holistic way, looking at our food, our lifestyle, our exercise, our emotions, the weather, you know, activities, uh, um, uh, hi, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I may pronounce your name wrong, uh, Dulce, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce your name, I wish someone could, uh, uh, could tell me. Um, so advice for low, low blood pressure. Um, again, uh, t t t two main causes, uh, by far the most common cause is more of a, of a, a low energy or, or a deficient condition in the body. Uh, where you could say the internal energies become weak, um, particularly the heart and the circulation has become weaker, and so there's not so much force uh, pumping the blood around the body. Um, and this may come from exhaustion, from over, you know overworking, overexerting, too many demands over a long period of time. Um, it may come from uh, a lack of foods which give us uh, really nourish the body uh, well long term such as whole grains bean stews soups um, um, sea vegetables uh, maybe some fish or shellfish uh, etc or from having too many um, um, foods which particularly um, stimulants so um, in the West, again, uh, kind of different thinking in the East and the West. If we want more energy, we think of having a cup of coffee, a cup of tea to give us a lift, something sugary, even having a, a sports drink, which sounds like it's good for you, but actually is mainly sugary water um, uh, and alcohol. Too many of these foods long term um, uh, really weakens the body's key. It, te it takes the key out. It gives, they can give us a bit of a lift but that's by bringing the, the energy from deep in the body, such as from the kidneys, uh, up, so we feel a little burst of energy, but then they deplete our internal energy. Um, also, the heart has a lot to do with our emotions, and what nourishes our heart are loving relationships, and uh, touch, and um, being around people that love us, and um, hold hands, and um, um, uh, nourish each other. And if we're really lacking that um, uh, meaningful, loving company um, and support, then also uh, that can have, enough, that can have a uh, lower our heart energy and might contribute to low blood pressure. Um, so then a small number of cases of low blood pressure can happen when people have the opposite, we'd say in macrobiotics, have a more yang condition when the whole body gets very tight because the heart is pumping blood outwards uh, so it needs more expansive energy and if people's bodies get very tight then the blood doesn't come out easily so I've only seen this a few times but um, if people become very tight because of tight mental attitudes um, <coughs> <coughs> perfectionism, thinking you have to, one has to work very hard to justify one's existence, um, etc. Holding a lot of emotions in, eating a lot of salt and yang foods um, could um, create um, a, a low blood pressure. Uh, then they obviously need the opposite remedies. They need things which loosen them up and, and uh, help, help relax them uh, in order to help that problem. Hi Joe, um, great to have you join, and uh, nice to uh, nice to see a photo of you and uh, uh, missing seeing you. So it'd be good to see you again sometime. So um, we talked quite a bit about um, um, blood pressure and about uh, prevention, and uh, quite a bit about crevasse and uh, how to strengthen the lungs, particularly at the beginning. So I wonder if there are any other areas that you um, would like to ask questions about. Um, 
We have been going for an hour yet, an hour now, so um, maybe um, you've reached the end of your questions. So just while I'm waiting to see if you've got any more questions, um, as I was saying at the beginning, last uh, we brought out a range of online courses, um, which I've deliberately kept uh, very, che very uh, cheap, very economical, because I know a lot of people um, um, are pretty hard up at the, in these times, losing losing work and businesses and so on. So last night we started a um, how, to, how to increase your health during the pandemic, um, which um, had over 20 people join. Um, if that attracts you, then then we will probably repeat it and send us an email info at macroschool.co.uk and let us know, and then we'll put on another one. Next week, I'm also starting a, uh, a six weekly uh, cooking class, uh, one cooking class every Tuesday morning, and in the evening, a um, course, uh, four part course on strengthening the immune system. Um, so, if you're interested in those, um, check them out. This um, Tuesday evening session the, with these free questions, um, I'm going to move from 8 o'clock to 8.20. Uh, to make space for that uh, strengthening your immune system uh, uh, course. So, uh, if you want to join this session next week, it'll be at eight twenty. Um, um, also, if you uh, if you want to have a, uh, receive a mail out on, um, uh, we send out a monthly mail out on upcoming courses. Then I think to the left hand side of your of this video. There should be a, a button you can you can click on to um, uh, to have your you know, to to, to give, give us your your, your an email address and then you'll get sent um, uh, this monthly update. So hey, Dave, very nice to hear from you. Thank you, thank you for your thanks, and uh, Morgan too, and uh, thank you for coming on, Hader. And um, I'm curious to know. Um, more about more about you and um, um, what you're what you're practicing and how you help people. Sounds like you're wanting to use a combination of Western and, and more kind of natural medicine, which which would be really really good. So I think it's just what we need right now is people that can understand both. Um, Jennifer, you're asking about foods to help hay fever. So. Um, at the beginning, I was talking about really how to strengthen our lung energy. Um, um, so, really, if you go back and listen to that, um, in macrobiotic terms, I'm not sure. Maybe you can you can you can type in if you want if you're familiar at all with macrobiotics or not. Um, but the first thing is to avoid uh, what we would call the yin foods, the expansive foods, the foods which which um, soften and weaken the mucous membrane. Um, sugar, um, uh, excess alcohol, nothing wrong with the odd beer or whiskey or a little bit of alcohol sometimes if you're in good health, but not great with hay fever. Uh, a lot of tropical fruits, fruit juices, spices, uh, a lot of refined foods. Um, um, and what, ha what helps the lungs is um, whole foods, whole grains, whole vegetables, whole beans, um, soups, um, I haven't talked a lot about soups uh, the last few times, but um, soups, uh, particularly broth soups, which are you could say hot, salt, hot, salty, or mineral-rich liquid, is very strengthening for the lungs and the kidneys and other organs in the body. So, just making a simple vegetable soup great to put some some dried sea vegetable in, like such as some dulse or some wakame, to add more minerals. Uh, put some some vegetables in if you want to put a few lentils or something else in you could do and then season it with either sea salt or herb salt or miso or tamari or shoyu something salty so you've got this hot salty liquid uh, is strengthening um, so for hay, fever, for hay fever probably the most important thing is to really stay off sugar even and even if one can, depending on how you know how far one can take it, even staying off fruit, which may seem strange because a lot of people think fruit's healthy and so on, but fruit is soft and watery. And if we eat f fruit, then our mucous membrane also becomes soft and watery, and that's much easier for 
the uh, pollen and uh, foreign particles to then irritate the mucous membrane and set up an, a, a reaction that creates you know, all the symptoms, all the hay fever symptoms. So um, temporarily, it could also be good to really stay off fruit. So I hope that that helps. Uh, Christine, uh, thank you for your seeing. Nice to have you here, Joe. Uh, yeah, everything's good here. Um, I hope, I'm wondering. I guess I guess your business is very quiet. Um, um, I hope you're doing okay. Um, uh, despite the loss of business, quite a lot of people I think are enjoying having a bit more time and space. So maybe you can enjoy. And uh, hope to see you again soon, Joe. Um, hi, free. Nice to have you join, Jennifer. Uh, that's, that's fine. Okay, so I think I'm going to finish there. So I'll be back here next Tuesday at 8.20 uh, if you'd like to join again. Um, if you're interested in really the lungs, we were talking about a lot. There's more at the beginning of this video. And also um, next Tuesday at 7 uh, when I begin the Strengthening Your Immune System course and we're going to do a whole hour on how to strengthen your lungs. Okay, thank you very much um, for joining. Um, I really hope you stay well and um, and uh, stay positive and um, uh, don't get too anxious and fearful and uh, look after yourself well and uh, strengthen your lungs. Okay, night night.